watching this video because you want to learn how to use splice effectively. So I'm going to cut around the fat and get to the point here. Most of the time when you're using splice, you're not going to be playing any instruments. It boils down to taste and picking different sounds that work well together. That's your goal. So with that in mind, let's just dive in. We're going to go and get started by going to the browse page. This is usually where I start. And then I'll head over here to genres. And obviously you've got a ton of different genres that you can pick from. If you have something in mind, go down that path. For starters, I'm just going to go down a very generic sort of path, which is trap, because it's pretty straightforward. When I start, I generally go over to loops. So go over here when it says one shots and loops, and let's switch that to loops, which just filters out all the one shots, which will be useful down the line. But for now, we're trying to build an idea, a skeleton. So you want loops. When it comes to picking the first loop, you generally want to focus on the foundation, which really boils down to either drums, chord samples, or like a hook sort of sample. So I just go down here and you can go with the arrow keys and listen by and find something that you like. In my case, I like this one. So I went ahead and purchased it and added it to my library. If you don't have a lot of credits, I recommend adding stuff to your likes first, which you can access over here, and then really picking something that you really, really like instead of just burning through your credits by downloading something and trying it out. In any case, I like this, so I downloaded it. The first thing you want to look at here is what key you're in, in this case, C sharp major and the BPM 157 BPM. I'm going to be using Ableton for this kind of tutorial here. Once you have your sample, you click, drag, and just drop onto your first track. And you'll notice that Ableton automatically changes the BPM to match the BPM of the sample. It almost got it 156.99. So let's make sure that's 157. No biggie. So now when I play back, I've got it perfectly in Ableton. If I turn on my metronome, you'll see it work good there. Okay, cool. So we've got that. Now, it could be very tempting to just keep going and just find a bunch of different stuff and throw stuff into it, but you can make your life easier. Like we mentioned, we are in C sharp major and 157. So we can actually, within the genre of trap, get a little bit more specific. So now this is where filtering out things really helps. So we're going to go into the key, which we know is C, C sharp major. And for the BPM, we don't have to be exact, but we want to be within the range. So let's do 150 to 160. And so we're already going to start cutting down the possible loops that work. What I like to do is keep this playing in the background, lower the volume quite a bit. And somewhat in key, I like to try to... That guitar could be something cool. I'm gonna add that to my likes. You'll notice that it just because you're in the same key, it doesn't particularly mean that it's gonna perfectly fit with the chord progression that you picked, but it generally will get you closer. Okay, let's use this. There's like a little arpeggio there that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna download that. You'll notice this is 155 and our track is 157. Luckily with Ableton, when we drag it in, it will automatically change that to be the correct. Now if we feel that's too fast, and if we feel that's going too fast because it's double time here, we can go over here and make it slower, which is actually what I wanted. So the loop kind of ends early for me. I don't like that. What I want to do is just actually just use this first part. And what we can do is just either click and drag while holding option, or you can do command D to just duplicate it. So now we're going to get rid of the C major because we're going to move over to drums and we're just going to put drums and I'm going to keep the BPM, I'm gonna keep loops, and now while this is playing, mind you, not gonna be perfect, 
you can try to hit spacebar on beat. Okay, so this groove works well. It's also right on 157, so it's not even gonna have to warp it. We're just gonna drag it right in and put it in there. And I recommend here, um, as you're building this, everything's gonna start at zero uh, dB. You wanna lower it quite a bit because you can see I'm already kind of clipping on the master there. You don't want that, so. Make sure you always keep in mind some basic gain structure so that you're not just like immediately running out of headroom. So that already feels like a good loop that kind of you could already build off of. The last thing I would maybe get in here is some bass and like a lead melody. Let's try to do some sub bass here because this is trap. So. Get rid of the drums here. Let's put bass, and uh, you can even look at some other stuff here. Let's do a 808 bass. So we got 808 bass, and let's go back to keeping the key at the C sharp major. And we can see here we're running out of options. There's not a lot that fit these specific sort of markers, but let's see if we can find something. Okay, so for starters, it looks like in C sharp major, there isn't particularly anything, which is a good example for what we're gonna try here. We're gonna get rid of that and we're just gonna go to major. And that leaves us to be all the keys here. And so this is gonna be a little bit where it gets a little trickier, but you're gonna have this going. In this case, I'm gonna try to remember what the chord progression is doing without hearing it and then just kind of leave the drums. Okay, so there's something here that I like about this, but this is in D major and it's at 150. Not to worry, I think we can make this work. Let's drag it in. And so again here, we know that we are not in this key. We are in C sharp major, but this is D major. So you've got C sharp right here. And then this is D major, this is D. So in this case, it's pretty easy. We're just gonna bring it down half a step. And the way we do that right here is Right here on pitch, bring it down one step. And so normally, you know, you would grab a keyboard or a guitar or something and figure out what note you're playing and try to do it right. But in this case, this is a tutorial for people that maybe aren't so musically inclined, but have an ear. So, so what we're gonna do here is go in and manually adjust this. Like there's something wrong with this first note. It's in key, it's fine, but it's not the root note. So let's hear what the chords are doing. And usually you can find the lowest note, which is your root note, just by humming it. There it's bum, bum, boom. So your, your chord progression should be bum, bum. And that's boom. So let's bring that down. Dum. Let's solo that. So we just hear. Um, just keep going with the arrow down. So in this case, it's eight semitones, eight semitones down. So it should work now. And now I'm gonna hit Command J for join. Now we basically built a new loop that works better with ours. Just because you put it in the key in the BPM doesn't mean that every single sample is going to work. This is where it really boils down to being a producer and using your ear to decide what sounds good. So. Don't be afraid to get out of the genre. And like, for example, if you're making a trap 
song insert stuff from like Latin elements or other stuff. It's it can often work by creating a fusion of different genres. So I really recommend that. Let's start over just for fun. Why not just delete all of that because we don't care, right? And we're gonna go to the polar opposite end of the spectrum. We've done a little bit of trap, but let's go into something that feels a little bit more live. Um, let's do something more indie rock, for example. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna start with some drums. This is 80 BPM. Let's drop it in. So we've got a new groove, 80 BPM. I'm just gonna let it roll. And now that we're still in the indie rock world, let's do a range of 75 to 85. I generally try to keep within 10 BPM when I'm building a range because if not, it can get a little difficult to work with. So let's go with some guitar, it's indie, right? We don't have a key yet, so we can play around anywhere. I kind of have the drums in my mind so I know what it sounds like. Another cool feature that Splice has is like, for example, these first two were acoustic guitars. I'm not gonna be using an acoustic guitar, I don't think. So you can go over here and hover over acoustic and you'll see this little minus sign pop up. Click that and it will purposefully not include acoustic stuff. Sounds nice. Let's use this. Let's use that. And we're just gonna drop it in. And it looks like it's a little longer than my other loops, so I'll just duplicate that over, no big deal. So again, E major. Let's try to find a bass line here. This is probably gonna be a little bit more difficult, but we'll Try to make it work anyways. E major, and let's try adding electric bass. We're already pretty limited, so let's see. So this is a good example when you're really limited like this. Um, I'm gonna show you an alternative of how you can build a kind of like bass line. So in this case, let's get rid of loops and let's go to one shots. Let's get rid of the key. And let's do a bass. So we're gonna do electric bass here. We want something just clean. So we're just gonna go with something pretty straightforward. This is just a bass and that's in D. There's a couple different ways that we could do it. We could do the manual way where I was saying where we just go in and drag it in and then just keep messing around with the pitch. So in this case, if I go down five semitones, I know that works. And then I could just literally copy and paste it. shift and knock it down so this is a very like tedious way of doing it but i don't blame anyone who does it like this i've done it before like that it creates different results than if you were playing but at the very least now um i've kind of created a baseline but i'm going to show you an alternative way to do it really quickly we can um, go over here to instruments and we're gonna go into uh, simpler. I'm gonna put that in here. And then we're gonna take that same sample, drag it in right here. I'm gonna make it a one shot. And if you click and drag, you can kind of zoom in when you have that little magnifying glass. Let's scroll over and let's make the start right at one. And we know this was in D and just for the sake of being able to play this a little bit easier, we're gonna do the same thing here. It's D and go down half a step and then one step to get it into C. Why? You'll see why. 
uh, one, two. Make sure you have computer MIDI keyboard on. You can hit the M and then that makes your keyboard, as you can see here. And so you just basically made yourself a little MIDI instrument. If you have it on one shot, it'll play out the whole thing. In Classic, we'll make it so that when you stop playing, it stops. And so now technically we have like a little bit of a sampler here using just a sample that we got from Splice. So we could play our own bass line like such. And um, we could always go in here and modify whatever we want so that it's different. But in this case, I'm going to select all, hit a little bit of a U to make it a little bit tighter, quantize it, and now we've got a bass line. So that's it for this quick tutorial. There is actually an extended version that is available on my Patreon for free. All you need to do is sign up and join, and you'll be able to see the full extended version where I develop this second little idea a little bit more. Um, otherwise, I hope you got something out of this video, and if you enjoy stuff like this, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, there's a link below to sign up for Splice if you are interested in trying that out. Thanks for watching.